All right, welcome to another tutorial in Maya. Um, today we're going to take a look at some uh, N cloth properties here. In Maya 2009 and above, they have the uh, N cloth. So you can uh, use your N cloth to do all sorts of cool stuff with clothing or fabrics or anything like that. So essentially, what we're going to be creating today is a uh, N cloth. We're going to look at some of the properties that control this dynamics, and um, we're going to see how you know we can basically use it to do something like this. Uh, pretty simple. Um, I've created a, an end cloth use in a um, little motion graphics demo here and you can see where there's sort of a, a saucer kind of flying through that uh, cloth and essentially I just assigned a JPEG image to the cloth and then made it a collider so um, we'll look at that. Um, right now um, I've got a scene set up here and uh, let's just see what uh, what's going on there. It's kind of the same thing. It's just basically a um, cube um, and that cube is resting uh, on the on the grid there and the cloth is sort of draping over it. So let's get started. Let's just create a scene from scratch. Uh, let's go up and just do a file and do a new scene. In this case I don't need to save my settings. Now the first thing you'll want to do is create an object for your cloth. So usually a, a polygon plane works great. Um, so go ahead and just create a plane, sort of stretch it out over the grid there. And uh, let's move it up just a tiny bit. And uh, let's go in and, and uh, use the shaded mode so we can see it better. Okay, so now we have our um, basic plane. Let's come over here and, and create one more bit of geometry. Let's just do our cube and we'll just make a cube. Uh, we'll give this a little bit more scale and maybe maybe something like that and then uh, just for kicks and grins let's take that cube and let's put it back in the center somewhere just so we can kind of see what see what's happening so now that's fairly well centered out and I might as well center out this end cloth as well while I'm at it we'll just go zero 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 and let's bring this end cloth up um, let's uh, bring this this is gonna be our end cloth and you'll notice that there's a couple of different ways to get to your end cloth. Make sure you're in your end dynamics menu set. That's really important. And then what you want to do is you want to come over here into your end cloth um, uh, tab here. And this basically gives us a couple of choices. We can um, create uh, end cloth from this selected object just by pressing this little button. Or you can come up here to your um, end mesh and go to create end cloth. So let's do that. Let's just create an end cloth object. Now, by default, Maya will give you all of these variables for your um, end cloth. And here's the nucleus that's attached to that end cloth. So right now, very simple, let's just look at this end cloth shape. Um, there's our end cloth. Let's maybe set a timeline for our, our animation at maybe, uh, let's start high. We'll just start at 500, and then we can um, lower it from there. And let's look and see what happens uh, when we just play that animation from the beginning, just to see what happens from the start. Okay, as you'll notice, there's um, a little bit of gravity attached to that uh, end cloth, and right now it's just sort of floating in space, and it doesn't really have any dynamic properties, so to speak. So let's change that up first. Um, what we want to do is we want to. I'm going to go back to my general settings here and get my camera there. And I'm going to choose this cube right here. And in that cube, let's first make that cube a collider. Okay, we just want the cloth to collide with that cube. So I'm going to create a passive collider. And that's in your end mesh setting right here. Um, so basically, that's what we're going to do. We're going to create that. Okay, now um, we'll go back out to the home view. And let's, uh, let's take a look and see what happens to this as it... Uh, as it rolls over our collider now. As you can see the the cube is forming a um, you know assist, uh, a surface for it to react against and uh, there it is. Pretty simple. Okay now we're going to change things up. This is Maya's um, default settings and as you can see it's going a little slow there so um, let's make it go a little bit faster and maybe um, take a look at what type of uh, cloth we want to use in this scene. So I'm going to go there, make sure that my cloth's active. 
I'm in the end cloth shape one, and that's right where we want to be. In here, you'll see that Maya has a whole bunch of presets for um, the end cloth. So I'm going to come down here. Well, I'm going to start with silk, and I'm just going to hit replace. And what that's done is it's attached the properties of silk to this uh, end cloth. Um, let's take a look at what what the animation looks like uh, real quick with uh, with the end cloth. I'm going to go ahead and hit play. It's moving along a little slowly. Um, and there's a lot of frames. End cloth can get um, computationally expensive. Um, so you want to keep that in mind. Sometimes when you have a lot of, uh, like a long timeline and, and you have a lot of, um, you know, real detailed mesh, uh, things could go a lot slower. So. I don't think that's the problem though here right now. Um, let's take a look what the default settings are, um, especially on the nucleus. Let's rewind to the beginning of the animation and let's click on our nucleus tab here and look where our gravity set. Gravity is at 9.8, so that really doesn't have much gravity applied to that cloth. It's sort of like, oh, almost floating in space, you know, where there's a very low gravity. So let's bring it up to its normal weight um, you know we'll, we'll just go to 100% and that'll just give this silk 100% um, of its gravity so we'll make sure we rewound to the beginning of the animation and now you can see where it falls a lot faster and that's really cool so we can also change up these properties to make it move a little faster um, a lot of times what you're going to have to do is create a play, a play blast to see exactly um, the rate of that animation because it goes a lot slower in the window. So just be aware of that. We'll create a play blast later. All right. So we're going to come back here to the beginning. And what I want to do is, is come up here to my end cloth shape and look at a couple of uh, things that are going on here. You can always read about them in the notes, whatever it says down here. That'll give you a pretty good clue to what you can change up here to change things up. So first of all, I'm not really concerned with too many things other than say maybe the friction at the moment. I'm gonna bring that friction down. And um, I'm also gonna bring this thickness down a little bit. Um, I'll bring it down to probably about right, right in point one, something like that. Now let's take a look at the animation. Make sure you rewound to the beginning because it always needs to be rewound to the beginning in order to, to see the effects. And so now it seems to have a lot more pull. Uh, the animation seems to be going a little faster. And we're working our way through the sequence there in probably less than like 170, 180 frames. Eh, 140 something. Okay, I'm gonna stop right there. Since that's where we're at on our animation, I'm going to change up the timeline down here real quick because um, it's only taking up 160 frames and I don't need this many extra frames. So let's just uh, set this at 150. Okay. And now let's do a look at a couple of other things. Um, you do have a friction element that, that's useful and stickiness. And so you can increase both the friction you know, and the stickiness and make sure you rewound to the beginning of the animation and we'll see what those changes did. As you can see, it, it sticks to the object a bit more. Uh, it seems like it wants to sort of, um, yeah, it wants to be a little clingier to that surface. So you can tell that now we're almost at 150 frames and it still is on the object. So let's say we don't want that. Let's just come back and mess around with our friction a little more. Let's bring our friction all the way down to almost nothing. And we'll bring the stickiness down to like nothing. So you can have a zero balance on that. And now let's take a look. And it seems like it's going along fairly quickly now. And by about 150 frames. Yeah, that's about what we want. Okay, there you have it. Now, let's take a look at one thing. Um, over here in our, our nucleus node, you can see where the gravity and wind are acting at, like they're at a main strength of 100 here now, and the gravity direction right now is a negative one. And that negative one setting is what's making this fall through space. 
it's basically applying a negative force on it and forcing it down. Now, that's cool and everything, but if you want to change things up, let's say we were to set this at a positive one, and I just set that at positive one. Well, if I play the animation from the beginning, now you can see that that's rising up. So in this case, we may want to take our end cloth and move it down below our object. And if I go ahead and hit the, uh, the play button now, you can see we have an upward motion uh, from that gravity direction in that uh, on the y-axis. That's what this would be x, y, z. So that's pretty cool too. Um, one thing you can be aware of, you can change the wind speed, a little bit of the wind direction, wind noise, all of that. So that's great. Okay, now let's go back and, and switch our gravity direction to a, a negative one. So I'm going to put in negative one there. And we'll bring, the, we'll bring this back up and play it a little bit from the beginning. And notice that it pretty much does exactly what we thought it was going to do. Now, let's say we want to anchor this uh, piece of cloth in space somewhere. And that's really important because a lot of times you don't want things just free falling everywhere. Well, there's a simple way to do that. And we're going to go in here. We're going to take a look at our end cloth. And I'm going to right mouse click and come over to Vertex. And you'll see where I can now choose any of these little vertices. Um, essentially, I'll just hover over the one in, say, this corner. And I'm going to highlight that. I'm going to, I'm going to click that. And now I'm going to shift click a couple of others in this same area right in there. And because I have those um, selected right now, I can come up here. And one of the coolest things is to add a, a transform constraint, basically just an anchor. It just tells it, hey, stay there anchored in space. So I'm going to go ahead and hit transform. And as you'll notice, these are now a dynamic constraint shape. And this is the uh, where it's located. And let's watch what happens now that we have a um, now that we have a, a transform there, I'm going to scoot out a little and I'm going to click on this. We'll back into, you'll, you'll notice that there's uh, a little bit of a highlight here. That'll let you know where your locator is for your transform constraint. Now if I play the animation, okay, so you'll notice that it it's being constrained by that area. And so it does have forces acting on it. And now it's moving about in space, and it's doing something completely different. So that's a transform constraint. And you can add them anywhere to your mesh, um, just depending on, on where you want things to kind of be. But that's the concept. And yeah, play around with this. Um, there's a lot of different um, settings you can use. Um, if you go up into your presets, I'm going to hit stop. If you go up into your presets here, you got all these different uh, materials to choose from and they all have a slightly different properties and there's ways of blending them and, and sort of making them into into your own and then if you have something that you like as a preset you can save that with a special name and uh, apply that to your cloth all the time and you won't have to go back and keep readjusting the properties of, uh, of a specific end cloth so that is super cool all right, so um, I hope you learned something and uh, read a book and uh, take another tutorial in Maya and uh, get to work. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.